Learning Objectives After completing this module, learners will be able to understand the concept of infrastructure and its different categories. Learn how infrastructure is proportional with economic development of a country. Understand the two salient sources of energy and its consumption all over the country. Learn about the possibilities of non-conventional energy and its utilities. Learn about the consumption pattern of commercial energy in India and its exhausting nature. Understand the concept of different sources of electricity and its increasing demand rate. Learn about the prevailing challenges in country's power sector and roadways of the solution in this aspect. Learn the rate of penetration of the private sector in power sector in the country. Understand the concept of health infrastructure in the country and its present situation. Definition of Infrastructure What is infrastructure? Infrastructure is the term for the basic physical systems of a business or nation, transportation, communication, sewage, water and electric systems are also examples of the infrastructure. Primarily, in 1987, a panel of the US National Research Council adopted the term public works infrastructure to refer to functional modes including highways, airports, water supply and resources, telecommunications as well as the combined system that these elements comprise. Applicable to large and small-scale organizational frameworks, infrastructure can include a variety of systems and structures as long as there are physical components required. For example, the electrical grid across a city, state or country is infrastructure based on the equipment involved and the intent to provide a service to the areas it supports. Categories of Infrastructure Infrastructure is structured in such a way as to attain ultimate efficiency for maximum output and to achieve the highest possible productivity level. Briefly, it can be categorized into two main types of infrastructures as the economic and the social infrastructure. The economic infrastructure refers to the physical network that keeps an industrialized nation smoothly functional like the transportation, energy, communication, water management, measurement networks, waste management and so on. The social infrastructure includes health, public education, social security, administration and others on the other hand. Infrastructure and Economic Development Infrastructure always has two-way relationship with economic growth. 1. Infrastructure promotes economic growth and 2. Economic growth brings about changes in infrastructure. Studies have indicated that with the 20% sustained increase in public investment in infrastructure, the government can accelerate real growth by 1.8 percentage points in the medium to long term, that is, 6 to 10 years. Development of Infrastructure in India Government Expenditure in Infrastructure in India The Government of India is taking every possible initiative to boost the infrastructure sector. Some of the steps taken in the recent past are being discussed hereafter. Announcements in Union Budget 2018-19 are as follows. Massive push to the infrastructure sector by allocating Rs. 5.97 lakh crores, US dollars 92.22 billion for the sector. Railways received the highest ever budgetary allocation of Rs. 1.48 trillion, that is US dollars 22.86 billion, Rs. 
16,000 crores, US dollar 2.47 billion, towards Sahaj Bijli Har Ghar Yojana Sobhagya Scheme. The scheme aims to achieve universal household electrification in the country. Rupees 4200 crores, US dollar 648.75 billion to increase capacity of green energy corridor project along with other wind and solar power projects. Allocation of rupees 10,000 crores, US dollar 1.55 billion to boost telecom infrastructure. Infrastructure development in rural India. In Indian villages, the people still use the biofuels such as crop residues, dung and fuel wood to meet their energy requirement. Long distances still need to cover to fetch fuel, water and other basic needs. The census 2001 shows that in rural India only 56% households have an electricity connection and 43% still use kerosene. About 90% of the rural households use biofuels for cooking. Only 24% can avail the tap water facility. About 76% of the population drinks water from open sources such as wells, tanks, ponds, lakes, rivers, canals, etc. Comparative Analysis of Infrastructural Development with Other Countries in 2010, the increase in the growth of Chinese economies, which was almost 38% in the comparison with India's growth rate of 20%, indicating a huge investment on roads, which further enhances the employment and income levels. Energy Sources of Energy Energy is the essential component in the growth of a nation. In agriculture, industries, transport, household uses, and in other requirements, it is utilized. We can divide the source of energy into two major types commercial and non commercial sources. The commercial sources include coal, petroleum, and electricity, which need to be bought. On the other hand, the non commercial sources include agricultural waste cow dung, firewood, as found in nature. The commercial energy resources are generally exhaustible and thus it needs to be preserved for future uses. Commercial resources account 50% of all energy resources as consumed in India. In villages, more than 60% households depend on traditional resources of energy like firewoods and coals. If we see the entire consumption perspective, then we can see 65% of total energy as consumed in India from commercial means. Among them, 55% from coal, 31% from oil, 11% from natural gas and only 3% from renewable hydroenergy. Firewoods constitutes 30% of entire consumption in this aspect. Non-conventional sources of energy The non-conventional sources of energy such as the energy from sun, wind, biomass, tidal energy, geothermal energy and even energy from waste material are gaining importance. This energy is abundant, renewable, pollution-free and eco-friendly. Thus, the Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency, IREDA, was set up in 1987. During 2003-2004, hydro, wind and nuclear resources accounted for 28% and 2.4% respectively of entire power generation capacity of the country. Power Electric Generation in India A country's GDP growth rate normally stays lesser than its sustaining growth rate of demand of power. When power supply grows 12% annually, the GDP increases by 8%. In India, 70% of power generation capacity is accounted with coal and natural gas and oil thermal resources. 
Challenges in Power Sector in India Installed Capacity versus Growing Demand and Other Problems The main objective of Electricity Act 2003 was to introduce to protect consumers' interest and provide power for all. The electricity generation target of conventional sources for the years 2017-18 was fixed as 1,229.400 billion unit, that is, growth of around 5.97% than the previous year. Between 2000 to 2012, India needed 1 lakh megawatt capacity to mitigate its growing demand, but it was able to add 20,000 megawatt in a year. Additionally, different SEBs incur losses up to rupees 500 billion crore due to depreciation loss, wrong pricing, and other inefficiencies. There are many cases of power theft, and unequal distribution raises the people unrest in many areas. In the thermal power generation, the increasing rate of shortage of coal supply is also becoming a great consequence. Quest for Renewable Energy Resources in India The Electrical Department of Thane Municipal Corporation has undertaken various initiatives in promoting energy efficiency and renewable energy in municipal services. This was appreciated at the state and national level since 2003 onwards. The Government of India has declared Thane City as pilot solar city. The Budget Lamp Yojana is a scheme developed by B to promote energy efficiency lightning in India. An avoided generation capacity of 415 megawatt has been achieved by the CFL distribution during 11th plan, which is verified by the third party. The monitoring and verification process of the BLY has commenced for issuance of CERs for the completed projects. Private Sector Investment in Power Generation in India After the privatization of Delhi Vidyut Board, Reliance Energy Limited owned BSES started to manage power distribution in two-thirds of Delhi, known as DISCOMS. The Tata Power owned NDPL distributes power to the north and northwest of the capital. India being the fifth largest producer of wind power with more than 95% of the investment is from the private sector. Health Infrastructure in India Present Situation of Health Infrastructure in India The scholars assess that the people's health can be assessed by the rate of infant mortality and maternal mortality incidence, life expectancy and nutrition levels, along with the presence of communicable and non-communicable diseases. Thus, we can say that the development of health infrastructure ensures a country of healthy manpower for production of goods and services which are solely the responsibility of the government to ensure. The presence of health infrastructure in the country requires to ensure where every people can access the health facilities in the country, including preventive and curative both. During 1951-2000, to 2000, the number of hospitals and dispensaries increased from 9,300 to 43,300 and hospital beds from 1.2 to 7.2 million. In between 1951 to 1999, the nursing personnel increased from 0 0.18 to 8.7 lakh and allopathic doctors from 0 0.62 to 5.0 lakh. Expansion of health infrastructure has resulted in the eradication of smallpox, guinea worms and the near eradication of polio and leprosy. Health System in India To deliver health care services to the people, public health care has been organized at three levels. 
Indicators of Health Infrastructure in India The Rate of Global Burden of Diseases GBD The Global Burden of Disease Study 2010 GBD 2010 is a collaborative project of nearly 500 researchers in 50 countries led by the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation IHME at the University of Washington. Disability Adjusted Life Years DALYs quantify both premature mortality YLLS and disability YLDs within a population. In India, the top three causes of DALYs in 2010 were preterm birth complications, diarrheal diseases, and lower respiratory infections. Two causes that appeared in the 10 leading causes of DALYs in 2010 and not 1990 were road injury and self harm. Urban, rural, and poor rich division. India was ranked at 112 out of 190 countries by World Health Organization's 2000 report. While the opportunity to enter the market is very ripe, India still spends only around 4.2% of its national GDP towards healthcare goods and services compared to 18% by the US. Additionally, there are wide gaps between the rural and urban populations in its healthcare system, which worsens the problem. A staggering 70% of the population still lives in rural areas and has no or limited access to hospitals and clinics. Consequently, the rural population mostly relies on alternative medicine and government programs in rural health clinics. Lack of adequate medical staffs In India, there is one government allopathic doctor for every 10,189 people, one government hospital bed for every 2,046 people, and one state-run hospital for every 90,343 people. India has a little over 1 million modern medicine, allopath doctors, to treat its population of 1.3 billion people. Of these, only around 10% work in the public health sector shows data from the National Health Profile 2017. The shortage of health providers and infrastructure is the most acute in rural areas in general. Women Health in India Growing Incidence of Female Feticide in India The frequency of female feticide in India is increasing day by day. The natural ratio is assumed to be between 103 and 107 and any number above it is considered as suggestive of female feticide. According to the Decinal Indian Census, the sex ratio in the 0 to 6 age group in India has risen from 102.4 males per 100 females in 1961 to 104.2 in 1980 to 107.5 in 2001 to 108.9 in 2011. The western states of Maharashtra and Rajasthan 2011 census found a child sex ratio of 113. Gujarat at 112 and Uttar Pradesh at 111. Early marriages due to lack of education among women in India. The census data says that over 13 million adolescent girls between 10 and 19 years, equivalent to the population of South Sudan, were married in India in 2011. But fewer literate women were married as children or had children early compared to those who were illiterate. The number of child brides and mothers have not improved substantially from 2011. In 2015-16, an estimated 4.5 million girls between the age of 15 and 16 years were pregnant or had already become mothers.
absence of an efficient health infrastructure in India. According to Ernst and Young's 2015 study, there is one oncologist for every 1600 cancer patients in India. The report suggests that 70% to 80% of cancer patients are diagnosed in third and the fourth stages. The patients do not get equitable access to multimodal treatment as 40 to 60% of the facilities and oncologists are concentrated in seven or eight metropolitan cities, while fewer than 15% are government operated. The budget of 2017-18 is largely silent on policies and plan for prevention and control of non-communicable diseases, NCDs, which are taking the shape of epidemics across both rural and urban India. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Infrastructure is a network of physical facilities and public welfare services with which the concept of social infrastructure is equally important to support the program. Public and private partnership is required to accumulate huge funds for infrastructural development. Energy is very critical for rapid economic growth. There is a big gap between consumer demand and supply of electricity in India. Non-conventional sources of energy can be of great support to meet shortage of energy. The power sector is facing a number of problems at generation, transmission and distribution levels. Researchers say that if a country targets to achieve 8% GDP growth per annum in the sector of power supply, it needs to grow 12% annually. There is a wide gap between rural urban areas and between poor and rich in utilizing healthcare facilities. Women's health across the country has become a matter of great concern, with reports of increasing cases of female feticide and mortality. Regulated private sector health services can improve the situation and, at the same time, NGOs and community participation are very important in providing healthcare facilities and spreading health awareness.